New review money. Let's do it. It's now, it's never, and I've got to make my decision. This time it could be my moment. If this a mirage or a chance to fulfill my mission. anything from the last two months it's it's weird like i remember talking to jan mm -hmm. after that it's a blur like i it's like this i don't remember doing this i don't know when this happened and i i just it's weird i sense something wrong but worrisome at the same time hmm interesting uh -huh. Oh, oh God, why did I do this? Uh. What happened to you? Uh. Training for the Rocky Review. Uh, you know you don't actually have to train for these reviews, right? Uh, gotta get into character, Melinda. Uh. My lungs, they're on fire! <laughs> you do look like you're dying. <laughs> well, anyway, are you ready to do the review skit? Uh, uh, no, too tired. Really? Let's just, let's just do the review. Let's just come on. No time, no time. Oh, God. You're uh, sure? Yeah, come on, come on, let's do this. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the internet, and welcome to the newest episode of The Oscar Goes To. I'm Jan Michael. And I'm Melinda. And today's Oscar Goes To... Rocky. Let's begin. So with this Oscar winner, we have for the first time in our reviews going over a film that started off a series, one that is still continuing to this very day. So with that in mind, going back and seeing the first Rocky for you for the first time ever, what did you think? All right, so this is another movie that I only knew from pop culture references and spoofs and quotes. Um, so when I saw it, I thought it was going to be a majority of him down this road to like success and hopes and dreams. And it turned out that was only the last 20 minutes of the movie. Um, the rest of it was just a movie about a guy in a poor town, liking a girl, you know, just working for a living, barely getting by. So it just turned out it was kind of a generic movie, except for that last 20 minutes. 
I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, I remember really liking it when I first saw it a couple of years ago. And now um, on a repeat viewing, uh, it cemented just how much I really did like the journey. And a lot of it is because of what you said. I like that it is just kind of this story about this guy who's down on his luck. And he gets this chance to, to be something more. Uh, but it isn't something that is... 100% the central focus like that the the real fight itself like you said all that stuff really kind of takes place within the last 20 minutes of the movie and a lot of the the film is just basically his life and and looking where he's at him interacting with this girl that he liked with this friend and I actually really liked that aspect of the movie it's not just your traditional okay we're gonna go train and then this is what the entire film is about so for, for me I liked that aspect of it and it also helps a lot that Sylvester Stallone is so likable in the role. Uh, I think he did a really good job. He has that kind of dorkiness to him that makes him very endearing. Uh, except for one point, which we'll get to later. Uh, but for the majority of the film, uh, he was such a good character to follow. And you, you really felt for him. Um, and you wanted him to succeed. And, and he has those heartfelt moments that, that really get you on his side. So... He's definitely a big part of why I like the movie a lot, just because he was so likable. Yeah, once I turned on the subtitles and could understand what he was saying, it was a lot better. Um, I just could not understand him for most of it. And it is kind of my problem, because I don't pay attention well to movies like that in the first place, so I tend to drift. And without actually clearly hearing them, it's hard for me to pay attention. But... I don't think that I fully loved him. Um, he had some like cringy moments in that movie. Um, I wasn't as enamored with a lot of the side characters either. I think the actors did a really good job with the parts they played, but they're not people that I really particularly like. Um, his best friend is really like crummy, scummy, like trying to get money off of his friend's back, which I understand it's a poor time and you have to make ends meet, but I just felt like I didn't understand their friendship. Um, it's just not one that I grasped to. Um, and then uh, he has a crush on this girl and that was also kind of a awkward, rocky relationship start too. Yeah, I do agree that the female love interest is probably the weakest part about the movie. Um, she needed more of a personality. <laughs> They made her shy, but I mean, shy people still have a personality. She was just kind of there, and she was supposed to be this this very important part of the movie and like a big part of his life. And I just didn't quite get that. I, I it needed a little bit more work, uh, and it also brings us to the part of the movie you wanted to talk about: the really awkward scene. <laughs> Yeah, there's a scene where he finally bothers this girl who doesn't really want to go out with him and blatantly says so um, to come up to his apartment by herself at night. And he acts all creepy. He's like, oh, I'm going to sit over here on this chair. You want to come sit on the sofa with me? Um, she's like, no. And he's like, oh, come on. What are you scared of me? I'm like, oh, hell no. These are red flags that any girl in her right mind would have never gone into that apartment. And I guess she's just lucky it worked out for her, but he was doing stuff like, oh, let me take off my sweater and look at my like body. And you're just like, this girl needs to run. Especially because I think he blocks the exit at some point. And at that point, I was just like, oh, this girl, she's gonna die. We had the same problem with Marty where there was that scene where he was kind of like invited her to the house, even though she was very uncomfortable there and then tried to like kiss her, even though she didn't want to be kissed. And I don't know what it is about about old films that think that this is super romantic. Uh, even as a male, uh, looking at it, uh, it's just so creepy. Like, I kind of feel uncomfortable watching it. And I, I, I don't know what it is. It, 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 there's something about, oh, you just got to be forceful. Like, that's what these scenes are are, are really saying. You just got to be more forceful and, and everything's going to work out. And no, no, it, it's that's not how it is. And like you said, it makes you very uncomfortable. It's the one scene in the movie where I'm like, oof, uh, yeah, probably should have gone that a different way. 
Um, and it's funny because I think this is even Sylvester's uh, favorite scene in the entire like series. And I'm like, oh man, I, I, I don't agree. It's actually probably for me the weakest out of the, everything that I've seen of the franchise. So yeah, wish, wish they had gone about it a different way. <laughs> There is one other aspect of the film that I really, really like, and it's how the story progresses. Uh, this isn't a story where uh, the he gets his chance to fight the champ because some random name was drawn out of a hat or because he was already some huge contender. He's a nobody. And the way that the story progresses where, hey, the fight is supposed to take place in this town. Oh, the fight wasn't able to happen, so what are they going to do? They're going to pick a local... Uh, a local fighter to to give the honor of of fighting the champ and the only reason he even gets picked is because he has such a good fighter name and the progress of how it moves i think is very well done it, it's so much better than oh hey we're gonna do a random drawing or something like that or hey kid you look like you could be a fighter you know just some bullshit arbitrary way of getting him into the into the plot this felt more natural to me, and I really liked how the story progressed with it. Yeah, I didn't know until you told me that Sylvester Stallone had written it. Um, I, If he really did, like, full-on write it himself, um, I think he did a really good job with Apollo Creed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, everything with him seemed legitimately business-like, like he was a thinker, a mover, a shaker. Um, he... Again, a very opposite of the people in the movie, aside from him. He was like the type of person you would expect to be doing something like this, like uh, changing his promotion so that he could still succeed in having events and drawing attention to things that are important to him. So, yes, thank you for reminding me that there is this golden nugget <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> well, yeah, it, but I also really like, you know, the, the contrast of it. So he is, as you said, very businesslike while... Um, Rocky is training and he's doing all this stuff. You know, this other guy's just business, right? He's he's getting the promotion stuff uh, uh, out of way. He's himself is not training because he's just so confident. And I do like this contrast between the two characters. Um, and yeah, that just the whole training montage as well. Uh, that's super iconic and and um, yeah, just th there's a reason why it's so popular and why the series is going on for so long. It's it's just very. It impacts you, right? You feel pumped. You want him to succeed. So I, I do. I really like this film. I, again, on, on repeated views, I think it's a very well-made movie. It's not perfect, uh, but uh, very, very well done. So with all that being said, Melinda, would you recommend this movie to today's audiences? And do you think it should have won the Oscar? I mean, I wouldn't not recommend it to someone um, but I wouldn't go out of my way to say have you seen Rocky if you haven't you really need to get on that um, it was I don't know it's just a movie to me um, it didn't spark my you know spirit the way I thought it was going to being so iconic but it's also a sign of the times so you know the style of movie at the time it was the greatest thing ever and I understand um, should it have won I think read the list of movies it was against and the only other one that I recognized was Taxi Driver and I just know basic of that so I would probably say it might have deserved to win against who it was up against. I do really recommend it to today's audiences. It is iconic for a reason and if you've seen the newer films and have liked those then I would definitely say go back check out the first one see where it all started because it's still a very well made story and again just the progression of everything just so well done and, and I, I, I do think that Sylvester is such a likable character in this Rocky's as an iconic likable character with the exception of the one scene okay it's it's just the one scene uh, for me. Um, as for should it have won the Oscar, this is a good one for it to have won the Oscar. Personally, I am of the opinion that I would have liked to have seen Taxi Driver take it, but I'm not upset with Rocky's win. Again, I, I really like it, so, uh, sure, I, I'm, I'm happy it won the Oscar.
All right, see you next month. Wait, we live together. I know what I said. So, what happened? Nothing. Um, we just finished the review. That's it? Yeah. N no skip? No. Really? N n nothing, right? Like, no ultimate dimension, Damien, or no me going to go crazy and kaboomy? No. Huh. That's, that's sus. That's very suspicious. I don't like it. Not one bit.